Today you're going to learn about five free Windows apps that will make your work life more enjoyable. I use them all the time, they're super handy, and best of all, they're free. Let's jump in. Number one, Drawboard PDF. You and your colleagues are probably spending a lot of time working remotely. It's really important to find the right tools to collaborate. And one topic that comes up a lot is how to annotate a PDF. Maybe you're a designer and you want to annotate your artwork or annotate a website wireframe, a dashboard, and so on. Now, it can also be great for teachers to provide feedback and great students' assignments. In all of these cases, you need a tool to redline, markup, and collaborate on these PDF files. One of the best free tools I found is Drawboard PDF. You can install it from the Microsoft Store for free. Once installed, just open the PDF that you want to annotate. It's quite intuitive to use, actually. You've got a range of tools, and you can adjust their settings from the radial menu. When you click on a tool's outer arrow, you can configure the tool. For example, adjust color, stroke, opacity, and more. Once you've configured the tool, you can add it to your favorites bar. Then just annotate your document as you need. Add a text box to give feedback or add a shape to visualize something. But that's not all. You can insert an image on the document or even add your signature. You can select an annotation, move it on the page, or create a copy with the shortcut Control C and Control V. And if the radial menu is in the way, just drag it anywhere else or just click in the middle to minimize it. It's super simple to use and really powerful. Give it a try. Number two, QT tab bar. The one thing I always missed in the file explorer in Windows is to have separate tabs. So just like you have in the internet browser, I'm sure you often move or copy files around to different folders. This means that you're gonna have to open a bunch of separate explorer windows. A program called Qt Tab Bar fixes that. It's an extension, so it just adds functionality, but the file explorer, it still works the same. Once you installed it, enable it by going to the View tab. Click on the dropdown for options and select Qt Tab Bar. To open a new tab, just right click on it and select Open a New Tab, or you just use the mouse wheel button, which will do the same. There are lots of settings to customize the experience. Right click on the tab bar and select Qt Tab Bar Options. For example, what I find useful is to define the double click on the folder view to close the active tab. This way, a simple double click closes the tab, or you can also use the shortcut Control W. On top of all this, you can also activate command bars for some quick access buttons. Now, I don't use them much, but you can enable them in the View tab under Options. They can be displayed horizontally and vertically. Number three, Crystal Disk Info. We all have important data and documents on our hard drives that we don't want to lose. But here's the thing. Every hard drive dies eventually. The one thing that we can do is keep an eye on its health. Crystal Disk Info can help you do that. Most hard disk drives have smart information to monitor the health of the disk. So for example, how many times the power was turned on, the time length of use, and the temperature. Crystal Disk Info supports both HDD and SDD, and it can tap into the smart data on your disk to assess the status of the drive. It's gonna give you an overall health status, and it shows the temperature of your drives. If it's blue, everything is in order. You can switch the drives by just clicking on it and it will show you some basic information about your drive down here. On the side here, it shows how many times it's been turned on and how many hours it's been in operation. Down here, you have many attributes and each of them have their own status color. As soon as you see some of them turn yellow or red, you should consider replacing the drive. Checking these parameters can give you an early warning so you can back up your data before your hard drive breaks down. Number four, free file sync. I use cloud services, but I also use external hard drives a lot. But I don't want to copy my entire folders every time to make sure that my backup is up to date. Instead, I want a solution that finds the differences between a source and a target folder and transfers only the minimum amount of data that I need. One of the most powerful open source solutions is FreeFileSync. 
It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. All you have to do is to put your source folder on the left side here and target folder on the right. With synchronization settings, you can decide if you want to do a two-way synchronization or to just mirror your files. So the synchronization will be only one way from left to right. Or you can also choose update, which is the same as mirror, but it won't delete files in the target folder. So this may be a bit confusing. So let's do an example. I have a temp folder on C, which I'm going to add on the left side. It includes four files. On the right, I'm going to add another temp folder, which is on D with five different files. When I click compare, I can already see the differences. With a two-way sync, changes will flow in both directions. You can already see it with the arrows that indicate the action. So one to four will be added on the right and five to nine will be copied to the left, meaning you're going to end up with the files one to nine in both folders. Mirror, on the other hand, is going to delete the five files on the right and copy over the four files from the left side. And update is not going to touch the five files on the right. It's just going to add the four files from the left. So just pick whatever fits your situation best. Then click synchronize and confirm with start. When the syncing is done, you're going to hear this satisfying sound. And there's even more. You can schedule a bad job for unattended synchronization. And the real-time sync component allows you to monitor one or more folders and automatically synchronize if any changes happen. Number five, VLC media player. You probably already came across situations where movies and TV, the default app to play videos, gave you an error. Maybe some codec was missing or it didn't support the file format. This is where VLC media player comes into play. It's been around for years, and while it may not look as fancy as some other ones out there, it will be the only media player that you're ever going to need. I didn't come across a file format that didn't work with it, and I never needed to download any additional codecs. But it can actually do much more than just video playback. For example, you can play internet radio. In VLC Media Player, go to the playlist view by pressing the shortcut Control L. Down here, under Internet, select Icecast Radio Directory. This will bring up the available online radio stations. Then just double-click on any of them to play it. It can also convert video or audio files to another format, stream video, and even record the video that you're playing. Highly recommended. Now, I hope these apps will come in handy for you. If you're using some other Windows software that you like a lot, please share it in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider joining our community by subscribing if you haven't done so already. Many thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.